Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D model of a building based off of elevations and plans that you import into SketchUp. All right, so this is the borough. So this is a building from the Harry Potter movies, and I just stumbled across this image of the plans and elevations of the borough and I just got really inspired to try to model this in SketchUp and in doing so I thought it would be really cool to show you how I imported the various plans and elevations into the model to help me model uh, the building in SketchUp. So the way I have this set up is I have each plan and elevation on its own layer so I can turn it on and off as needed and the way I use these plans and elevations is I would align the camera to a certain view so for instance I'll use one of these standard views if you don't see this toolbar um, on your version of SketchUp you can go to camera and standard views and access them right here or you can right click on the toolbar area and add that toolbar um, yourself and then I also switched to parallel projection view and then turned on x-ray mode and by doing that it gives an overlay of the flat two-dimensional elevation with the model behind it so by playing around with that and turning on and off the various elevations and plans it was really helpful in being able to reference them throughout the modeling process. So I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up for your own model and your own plans and elevations. So you want to start out in an empty SketchUp model. You can use whatever template you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to delete the uh, person there. And we want to orient ourselves to a top view. So we're going to go to camera standard views top and we're going to go to file and import and start importing our floor plans now personally I prefer working with uh, JPEG images and the reason for that is whenever I've tried to import CAD files I've always had problems with either the CAD files not um, well I should I should side note this by saying one of the advantages of using a CAD file when you import it into SketchUp it actually converts everything to SketchUp entities so in theory you'd think that would be very helpful because it would reduce the amount of work you have to do but what I find most of the times is that some of the edges don't connect properly they might not be drawn accurately um, a lot of times if there's curves they're they're way too segmented for for what I would prefer and I find that it's just ultimately um, more work to try to finesse in a CAD file than to work with a JPEG so it's kind of it's not the logical thing that you'd think of but um, that's what I found in practice so uh, we're going to go over how to import these as images, but if you do have a CAD file, by all means, definitely try it out and see if you can import the CAD file and if it's clean enough to use in SketchUp. So the important thing to note is if you're, if you're going to import a CAD file or an image file, just make sure you select the file type on this import window. So I'm just going to select um, all supported image types. If you're doing CAD, you want to select the AutoCAD file type. And then you're going to select the image. And by default, this is going to be use as image. You want to make sure it's use as image. And then you're going to click import. Then the image is going to be placed at the end of your cursor. And what we're going to do is just snap to origin and double click. Now, the important thing right now is don't orbit don't move your camera perspective at all um, we're gonna take advantage of how SketchUp imports or how SketchUp scales images when you import them so it's actually relative to the camera perspective so since all of these images um, are 
at the same drawing scale, we're just gonna go and import the rest of these um, right now. We're gonna start with just the floor plan. So you wanna import all of your floor plans first, double click, we'll go do that again. Um, and then we're gonna do the elevations later. So I'm gonna, again, snap at the endpoint. You're not gonna see, um, we're just stacking them on top of each other right now. So you're not gonna see anything different. Okay, so once you have your floor plans imported, you can see I've got all four floor plans imported. Assuming they're all imported at the same scale, what you can do is scale your entire model all at once. And we're gonna use the tape measure tool for that. So that's this tool right here. I'm gonna tap T on my keyboard to activate that. And what you wanna do is look for a dimension on the floor plan that you can reference. I like to try to go to find the largest dimension um, that I can find. In this case, I'm gonna go with a 27 foot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click at a starting point and then drag down to the other side of the dimension. You can see right now I, it's at about 12 feet. So that's not, that's not good, that's not what we want. So I'm gonna click a second time and then I'm gonna type in 27 feet, press enter, and SketchUp is gonna ask if I wanna resize the model. And that's precisely what we're trying to do here. So I'll click yes and it resizes the entire model. So all of the floor plans that we just imported are being resized. And if I try to measure this again, it should be about 27 feet. Now, one of the nice things about using JPEGs is you don't have to be perfect. You're just using this as a visual reference. So it doesn't have to be absolute perfect, absolutely perfect. And it's not going to be because it's a raster image um, you're going to have a hard time getting this really, really perfect. But that's, again, that's one of the advantages, really, of, uh, of using JPEG, is you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now that we have the floor plans imported and scaled, we can go ahead and separate them. So I'm going to orbit um, to kind of a 45-degree angle. I'm going to go back to perspective view, and you can see how the floor plans are sort of fighting each other because they're all stacked on top of each other. So we're just gonna grab the move tool. So I'm gonna tap M on my keyboard and we're going to just move these up. So I'm gonna tap up on my arrow, uh, the up arrow on my keyboard. And I'm gonna slide my mouse over here to the right. And I'm just gonna grab each one of these and place it um, in order. So this is number uh, letter C and here's D. So I have A, B, C, and D. Doesn't matter the distance right now, we're just, we just need to space them out a little bit. We're gonna actually place these at the precise uh, height that it slices through the model once we get the elevations in place as well. So the next step is to align these plans. So when looking at them from above, they're all aligned perfectly straight through. But first, before we do that, we wanna organize them a little bit. Cause one of the, one of the advantages um, or, or to get the most value out of doing this, you wanna be able to turn these floor plans on and off as needed while you're modeling. Now you could just right click each one and click hide. Um, but you'd have to, I have hidden geometry turn on, turned on right now. You'd have to um, turn hidden geometry back on to be able to right click this and unhide because um, images don't show up in the outliner. So there's no easy way to just select the images in the outliner without exploding them and, and regrouping them. So I prefer to use layers and what we're gonna do is just create a new layer for each floor plan. So in the layers window, I'm going to uh, click the plus sign and we'll do first floor, second floor, third floor, and fourth floor. So these are gonna show up alphabetically. That's why I'm using numbers for each layer. And then to assign um, each image to 
a layer, you're going to use the entity info window. So you can grab that right in this window uh, menu. Any window that you see here, if you don't have it visible, you can access it by clicking it in this menu here. And so you select the image and then you're going to select the layer that you want to assign it to. Okay, so now I'll click this one, assign it to the third floor, click this one, assign it to the second floor, and I'll assign that one to the first floor. So now, if I turn off the fourth floor and the third floor, you can see the corresponding images disappear. So now we're going to work through and align each one of these. I'm going to use the base floor plan as reference. So that's going to be my master, um, my master reference. And what we need to do is go to parallel projection in the camera menu. And we need to go to a top view. And we need to turn on x-ray mode. If you don't have these menus, you can right click and customize the toolbar to bring these menus in, or you can access X-Ray in the view menu under face style right there. Okay, so these are style settings. You can also select a style to bring X-Ray mode, um, but sometimes when I'm doing utility things like this, I just select it from, uh, from the menu. So now you can see that if I turn, let me turn X-Ray off for a second. So right now, this is the upper um, floor plan, and this is the, the one below it. So this is first floor, this is second floor. So right now, there's no way for us to reference um, the, the two. But when I turn on X-Ray, we now have a composite of both of them. So I can grab the Move tool with the letter M and select the second floor and you want to go one axis at a time so I'm going to tap the right arrow key to lock the red axis and don't be afraid to zoom in to get you know a good view of what you're what you're trying to look at so that's the red axis and then for the green axis same thing I'm going to tap the green arrow uh, <laughs> I'm going to tap the left arrow to lock the green axis and uh, you can see we're aligned there. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing for the third floor. So I'll turn off the second floor, turn on the third floor, select it, grab the move tool, we'll align the right axis, uh, the red axis and the green axis. You wanna verify the scale as well. You wanna make sure that uh, you know your scale is matching up because this house is so uh, out of square and and just odd sizes um, it's it's not matching up perfectly so then I'll do the fourth floor and same thing it's nice to find something that you can reference so for instance the chimney I'm using the chimney each time to uh, to reference. So now, if I if I turn if I orbit out of the way, I can turn on the rest of these. All of these floor plans are now perfectly aligned vertically. So if I go back to top view, right now we're looking at every single floor plan stacked on top of each other, and they're aligned perfectly. Okay, so at this point, I want to just click and drag a selection box over all of these and make a group. So I'll right click it, make group. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're now going to bring in the elevations. So file, import, front. So you can see this imported at a, a, larger, a larger scale because my... Uh, my camera perspective is is different than than what I had when I imported the floor plans, but I'm just being careful not to change my um, my perspective while I import these, and they're all going to import at the same scale.
Okay, so I have all the elevations imported. I'm gonna now select all of these and put them into a group. So the reason why we need to group the elevation images is because we're gonna use the tape measure tool again to scale it. But if we if we did the scaling outside in this main, you know, in the main model, it's gonna scale your floor plans too, which you don't want because obviously we've already set the scale for the floor plans. So we have our group, let's just double click on it to enter the group, and then we'll use a um, I'll go to top view. I'm going to turn off x-ray mode just so we have a uh, little bit clearer view here. And we'll find, uh, this is 50 feet here. So I'll go from this point up to right there and type in 50 feet enter. And so this time it's asking us a slightly different question, saying, do you want to resize the active group? And that's exactly why we did this inside the group. So now we have the elevation scaled. Let's go ahead and position them roughly to where we want them. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to perspective view, just because that's what I prefer. And we're going to go a little bit quicker through these. I'm going to use the move tool to just rotate these as a whole and I'm just gonna start to I'm gonna jump inside this group and start pulling um, pulling these away so I can start to so I can look at what which one goes where okay so now that I have the three elev or the four elevations roughly positioned and oriented to uh, to where they need to be I'm now going to align them to the floor plans. So I'm going to actually turn off the everything except for the first floor floor plans. And what I'll do is I'm going to get the height first. So I'm going to do this front elevation first. I'm just going to hover over to the ground plane and click that for reference and then I'm going to tap, in this case I have to tap the uh, left arrow key because I rotated this group so the axis is oriented off um, you know your, your standard because every group and component in SketchUp has its own set of axes so if you rotate the group you're rotating that group's axis as well. So I'm just going to reference this plane and that's going to align the the height of this from this point aligned perfectly with the floor plan uh, the floor plan height and next I'm actually going to just intersect this like this I'm actually going to use the uh, the front door for reference and it looks like it looks like my scale might be a little bit off let me just check that real quick and you can see we're off a little bit so let's let's try to rescale this so let me do this again 14 feet 6 inches enter yes I want to scale that so that scaled the elevations not the um, not the floor plans okay so that looks a little bit better so that's now aligned properly with the floor plan so I can then back this out out of the way I like to give a good amount of distance between the floor plans and the elevations just so you have a lot of visual space between the two so if you want to reference it you can orbit over if you want to look at your model you can just orbit out of the way because um, it doesn't matter because once you do a parallel projection aligned view um, the distance make it makes no difference now to align the other side you can do uh, one of two things you can just do the same thing that you just did and have um, orient it to the floor plan or you can align to uh, to this view turn on your x-ray mode and go to parallel projection and you can see how the two 
elevations align and you can then go one direction at a time to get them uh, to match up. So again, this building is so out of whack that it's going to be hard to get it perfect. And I actually adjusted this um, as I went along in order to, to get it as precise as possible. So go ahead and do that again to the left and right sides. And don't forget to add some additional layers and assign the, the uh, images to each layer. All right, so once you get those uh, images set up, you can actually set the height of the floor plans in reference to where they slice through the model. You just have to look for um, the, the, um, the section cut indicator of where the floor plan lies. And you, you just start modeling, start using the drawing tools, reference each image as you go, and toggle your layers on and off. So I hope you found this video helpful and if you'd like to learn more tips and tricks on how to use SketchUp, check out my website at mastersketchup.com.